All right. So power just got cut to my house, so we will continue with the last one finished. So if you're if you're ever doing linear algebra, linear algebra just means algebra with more than one variable. Okay. So here we've got uh, two variables. This is like x one and y one. We'll call this one like x two and y two. And so what we're going to do is subtract the x's and we're going to subtract the y's separately. And so we get 10 and five. So that means we have to head 10 east, 10 in the x direction. We have to head five north, five in the y direction. And then the sentry gun would arrive at the target. Okay. So yeah, linear algebra is actually really fun and, and actually really useful. So let's, let's give you another example. Let's say the, the sentry gun is at uh, 10, 6. Like we got a court Cartesian coordinate system and it's like over here at like 10, 6. And the target is over here at like 50, um, I feel like 50, 40 or something like that. So how far would the sentry gun, if it, if it was walking, which it's not gonna do, but like how far east would it have to walk? And how far north would it have to walk in order to get to the target? The person's over here and the sentry gun is like over here. So we got the targets at 50, 40, the sentry gun's at 10, 6. How far east and how far north would the sentry gun have to move to get to the target. This is called the displacement vector. Very useful. We use it all the time in video games. Anyone want to take a crack at it? You just subtract the two numbers, 50, 40, and 10, 6. What do you get? These are two different numbers. It's not like European commas. 40, 34. Brilliant. 40. So we, have, so we travel 40 units east. So we start at 10 east, and we're going to get to 50 east. So we have to travel 40 east, we have to travel 34 north. And so that is the displacement vector. Now, how far away is it? Well, that is the Pythagorean theorem. So if you have a right triangle with a leg side of 40 here, a leg of 34 here, then you're going to add together uh, 40 squared and 34 squared So 34 squared plus 1,600, and we're going to square root this, and it is 52.5 away, let's say. So 52.5. And so this is the length of that vector. The length of the vector is computed using the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay? So uh, that is um, really useful to know. For example, what if you want the sentry gun to have a um, maximum range, right? So if the person is like a mile away, it doesn't shoot him. That's kind of useful, right? Yeah. So let's do this in Unreal Engine now. Let me fire up Unreal Engine again. It's not... Who knows what happened? Uh. <laughs> let's see how much work we lost from them cutting my power. All right. Um, you've been practicing subtraction since you're yeah, but it's two subtractions, Megan. It's not just one. It's twice as complicated. <laughs> that's that's what's so funny about people saying linear algebra is complicated because it's you're, it's just the same algebra. You're just doing it twice. You know, if you're in two D, three times if you're in three D. So it's two subtractions instead of one. Okay. Um, so that is called the displacement vector, and there's two things we care about from that. Uh, the one thing we care about is the, uh, the distance, right? And we can use the distance, also known as the vector length. Lector, I should pick which word I'm writing, huh? The vector length. So the distance to the target is one thing that we care about, and the other thing is the direction, right? And so if we're gonna be doing line of sight, we want to make sure that their direction is somewhere in the direction we're looking. And that's what we're about to learn with dot product. Uh, let's try restoring it and cannot be, oh Lord, this could have broken a lot of things. Um, hmm, okay. Let's try reopening them. Uh, let's save all play. 
Oh, jeez. Yeah, this is... We lost some work here. Okay. Uh, let's recreate this really fast. Delete you, delete you, delete you, delete you. You come over here somewhere. Uh, good enough. Center gun blueprint. Okay, so we got this line here. Actually, that's pretty good, I think. So. So now we just need to make it um, do line of sight. Okay, so we're actually we didn't do so much. All right, so how do we uh, how do we do a displacement vector? Well, uh, I just showed you. You just do it by subtracting the two positions. So the target is the player, right? The target minus the sentry gun. Hello. There we go. And this here is the displacement vector. Uh, reroute this out of the way. Uh, if you double click on a wire, you can like reroute the wire. So you can kind of get it. <laughs> get some space. Okay. So that the result of this is going to be what. Uh, Megan just computed over there, right? So if the center gun is here and the player is here, then the result of that node is this this vector here. It is a vector pointing at the player with a magnitude and a direction. So how do we get the vector length of this? Like let's let's say let, let's add in a check, right? Let's say, hey, if they're more than you know 20 meters away, you know, we can't see them. All right. So we can do that by getting the vector length, right? That's the distance. So the vector length of the displacement vector is going to tell you um, let's try to make some more room over here. And so what should we set the maximum range of our sentry gun to be? So this is this value here is how far the player is away. How far, how far should the sentry gun be able to shoot? What do you think? You guys have got to give me a number. I'm just going to sit here and look at you. How, like, we're going to compare this against the maximum range of the sentry gun. 300 meters, 20 meters. Uh, I think 20 meters is a little easier to work with than 300 because I don't have to run away that far. Okay. So I'm going to make a new variable here called range. And if the player is outside of range, we're just going to ignore them. So compile, save, set range to be 20 meters or 2,000 centimeters. And so basically we're going to say if the distance they are away is less than or equal to the range, then we will continue on with the line trace. So we'll do a little branch up here. And there. Okay. So now, when, when every tick, what's going to happen is that it's going to grab the player, and then it's going to check to see if the player is within range of being shot at, right? And so it's going to do... It, this is a lot of math to be doing every tick. Like, I probably wouldn't code it this way directly, but whatever. It's educational. So we're going to compute how far away the player is, and if they are within the range, if they're within the 20 meters of us, then it will go ahead and do the line trace. If they're further away, uh, nothing happens. Okay. So we play this. See, it's shooting me, it's shooting me, it's shooting me. And then... Once I get 20 meters away, it stops. Pretty cool, right? And once I get within 20 meters, it's going to start shooting at me again. Sometimes it can see me. Sometimes it can't see me. Right? And then it killed me. Okay. Okay. 
So, the other thing we can get out of the uh, displacement vector is the direction, right? So there's two things. There's two things we care about. There's the distance that the player is from us, and there's the direction they're looking. And so the second big topic for today is called dot product. And dot product is very very useful whenever you're doing video games. You've got to know dot product. There's there's entire game development um, programs at colleges. And, and they don't teach this, and it, and it kind of baffles me. Like, I've had my students go on to, like, you know, Santa Cruz and Irvine and things like that, and, and they don't teach dot product. And I'm not, I'm not sure how you make video games without knowing dot product. It's not hard, okay? It's really not hard. So um, dot product uses what are called normalized vectors, okay? So um, a normalized vector... has length one. So normalized vector has a length of one. And how do you make a normalized vector? Well, in Unreal Engine, here's our displacement vector. We just drag down here and say normalize. This will produce a vector pointing in the direction of the player, but with a length of one centimeter, one unit long. Okay. And the reason for that is because the dot product works on normalized vectors. And so there's two normalized vectors we're going to work with. We're going to work with the direction to the player, and we're going to work with the direction we're looking. And so let me show you kind of visually how dot product works. Dot product tells you if two vectors Are pointed the same way. That makes sense? So if the direction to the player is the same direction the sentry gun is looking, then it can shoot you. Okay. So let me give you some examples. If you have one vector here and another vector pointed the same way, then this would be a dot product of one. If you have one vector pointed that way, one vector pointed that way, this is a dot product of negative one. If you have one vector pointed this way, one vector pointed this way, this is a dot product of zero, or it could be to the left, it doesn't matter. But it's not just one, zero, or negative one. Let's say the sentry gun is looking this way, and the player is kind of like, this way. This would be like a dot product of like 0.9 or something like that. Do you understand? And so what we do is we actually use this to determine sort of the field of view of the sentry gun. So we pick a threshold and we use that to control how narrow or how wide the field of view is on the sentry gun to shoot us. And we do that by just printing the result of the dot product. And we just kind of walk around and kind of see what numbers we get. And then we're like, okay, it should be about eh, 0.6 or better, you know, something like that. So basically, um, you know, maybe the center gun's looking this way and the player is like over here. This might be like a dot product of like 0.6, you know, or something like that. And it's kind of getting to the point where you're like, I don't know, like, should it shoot it? Like kind of, it's kind of out here. I don't know. You know, and it's one of those things you just sort of make a judgment call. Okay, so let me let me show you how to do that in code. Dot product is used everywhere in video games. Like, what if you want to backstab somebody? You shoot them with your knife. Essentially, you do a little trace line, and you hit. You look at the direction they're looking. You look at the direction you're looking, and if they're kind of close to each other, using dot product, then triple damage on a backstab or something like that, okay? If you, have a, if you have a vending machine, the vending machine's looking this way, and you're looking the same way as the vending machine, you can't use the vending machine because you're behind it, <laughs> right? You know? And so for a vending machine, you only want the vending machine to activate if the dot product is close to negative one, right? Because that means the vending machine's looking this way, and you're looking this way at it. And so when you hit the use button, you do a dot product. And if the number is below negative five or something, then you allow it to activate. Otherwise, you're like, sorry, you're behind the machine. You can't use it. 
you know. So uh, these things come up everywhere. So let me show you how it works. So uh, this is the direction to the player. And how do we get the direction we're looking? How do we get our forward vector? Remember? What is the name of the node to get the forward vector? Right? The forward vector is, of course, in the x direction, right? So we have a firing spot here. The forward vector is, is that red arrow there, right? How do we get the forward vector? Does anyone remember? It's called get forward vector. <laughs> Actually, oh, sorry, that did not work. Uh, yeah, let's grab it from firing spot, I guess. Okay, so firing spot, get forward vector, like that. Because specifically, I want to get the the red arrow right there. That's the direction that we're shooting, right? So uh, there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to dot product these two values together, and we're just going to print the results. Okay. So I'm going to do a dot product. Like that. And I am just going to print the results. So if I'm going to stuff further out east. So I'm just going to do this and do print the string. I'm just going to print the dot product. So if we are within 20 meters of the target, uh, we'll do a dot product and we'll print the results. So you can see right now, when I'm in front of it, the value is like 0.97. And then if I swing off to the side, it's like 0.7. More off to the side, it's like 0.56. And I died. Uh, and then I get off like perpendicular to it. It's like at around zero right now. And then I go behind it. And it's like all the way to like negative one. Right? And then over here, it's like negative four, negative seven, nine, negative 93. Directly behind it is like one almost. So directly in front of it is one. And then as I move to the side, you can see the numbers change. So what numbers do you think, you know, like look about right to you, right? It's like, do you, do you think it should be able to shoot me? Like here, let's take a poll. Do you think this, I'm gonna turn off the damage because it's just killing me right now. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cut the damage off right now. Um, just so that we can play test this, okay. So what about here? Do you think that uh, do you think it should be able to shoot me here? No. Yes. No. What about here? This is like point seven eight right now. Point eight. So Megan says point eight eight. It's so like over here. So that'd be like this field of view, like from like here on one side to like here on the other side. That arc is the field of view. If you if you use 0.88 as the as the threshold. If you do like 0.6, it'll be from like here to like here. So that's a wider field of view if you use 0.6. So whatever you use as the threshold, that that controls that controls the field of view. So let's, let's take let's take about what numbers do you want? So this is 0.6, 0.85. 96, 45, like if we did 45, it'd be like way over to like here, pretty, pretty wide arc, right? Like that's the arc for 0.45. 
So take a vote. You got you, you can't you can't just sit here silently. Like I, I need to I need you to tell me what the threshold's gonna be on it. We got uh, eight people watching the stream right now. And so far we've had two votes for 0.88. Okay. So we got six people that need to vote on what field of view is appropriate. There's no right answer. You just have to pick one. Okay. Everyone's just copying. Uh, Megan. All right. Well, let's do it then. All right. So let me put this back on. So we'll take damage. Okay. So what we're going to do is say if the dot product is greater than 0.88. So if the uh, thing is greater than 0.8, then we will do a trace. Line. All right, so basically every tick, it is first gonna see, is the player within 20 meters? If they are, it moves on to do the field of view check. And so if they're within 0.88, that's a fairly narrow band, then it will continue on to do a trace line. So we're doing three checks, right? We're doing range, we're doing if they're in front of us, and then if they're visible. Okay, so that's three different checks that have to be passed in order to finally damage the player. Okay. Play. So you see over here, that's, that's the range that it will shoot at. That is that is the uh, cone. Okay. Not that. Yeah. And it looks not bad, right? It's a bit weird that it can't shoot me this way. You know, I can kill it, bro. But uh, yeah, it's your game. You choose the field of vision for it. That's it. Kind of beautiful. It's actually pretty solid. Yeah. Like, it's not bad. You're not going to get an argument out of me. It, it, it just it, it really just depends on what you need from your game. Um, Dustin's like 0.89. We got to tighten that up. <laughs> it's just slightly too permissive. That's uh, funny. But it, and and honestly, though, like when you when you talk about like levels of like polishing and things like that, like people will come in and just like very slightly tweak values and and they'll do what I did there, which is like you just print. You just print the values out and just kind of walk around. You just kind of look at it and just go, like, eh, it seems about right to me. You know? Like, you just kind of have to develop a feel for it. Um, so, yeah. So, that is a sentry gun. Um, and uh, we could also have the sentry gun, like, rotate. That could be kind of fun. Um, hmm. What do you think? Uh, we could have the sentry gun like spin in place. We could do that. Um, we could have it rotate to face the player. We could have it uh, swing back and forth, like in Team Fortress. Um, I don't know. What do you feel like? Or, or we can leave it stationary and, and learn something else. What do you feel like? Swing back and forth, panning like a security camera. Okay. 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 All right. Um, all right. So let's think about this. So the first thing I think I'd want to do, if we're going to like have like a um, like a, a home direction we're looking, because if you keep adding and subtracting the direction it's looking, eventually it's not going to come back to center, right? Like if you add five and subtract four and add five and subtract four, the thing's going to slightly 
not be pointing in the same direction over time. So the first thing I think we should do is just write down what direction we're looking to begin with, and then we'll return here from time to time. Okay. And so uh, a, a classic trick for doing that is to have on begin play, this means when the world starts, when the game begins, right? We are going to get our world rotation, get actor rotation, get, okay, let's do this, get rotation, all right, it's, it doesn't have, if, if something doesn't have a white pin on it, then it won't show up if you drag out from a white pin. So what we're going to do is when uh, we begin playing, we're just going to write down, essentially, on a sheet of paper. We're going to write down the direction we're looking. And then as we rotate through time, we're going to kind of come back here from time to time. So um, right-click and promote to variable. Easiest way of doing that. And hook it up here. And then the variable is going to be called... Um, starting rotation, like that. And this variable type is called a rotator, get rotated, right? So this um, save our starting rotation. Okay, so that just kind of writes it down, all right? And then every frame, um, we will, let's just pull this back a little bit. We'll do a little bit of animation up here. Oh. Uh, it's okay. So um, every frame, we're going to rotate a little bit. And maybe we could, uh, let's see, how do we want to do this? We like get, get world time, get world double seconds, what is it? Get day maybe get, get current time What's the name of it? get time get second get year get date yeah. get accumulated time get delta time ah what's it called uh, Game time since creation. There we go. Okay. So this will this will return a float that is how many seconds have gone by since we were made. And so what we're going to do is say um, we'll, we'll, we want to swing to the right and then kind of like swing to the left and then kind of like swing back to the right again, right? And so that uh, we're going to set its rotation around the z-axis. The z-axis is blue, right? You see that right there? So if we rotate around the z-axis, that's called yaw. And so it's like you're spinning in a chair like this. This is yaw. Okay. Roll is rotation around the x-axis, like you're on a plane. You're doing a barrel roll, right? That's roll. Pitch is like you're in an airplane pitching forward or pitching back. That's rotation around the green vector, also known as y. So we're going to yaw, which is rotating around blue. And so what we're going to do is we're going to yaw, and uh, uh, what happened here? It's going to reset the layout on that. Okay, so um, we are going to like rotate.
So. So. set it as movable, right? Uh, remember how we talked about that? If you want things to change, you have to set them to movable. So inside of here somewhere, we need to set it to movable. There we go. Compile, save, run, and then you can see the thing is very slowly rotating. So what it's doing is it's getting how many seconds it's been since it's been created, and it sets its rotation, which is in degrees, mind you, not, not radians. So every 360 uh, seconds, every six minutes, it will complete one full revolution. It's not very fast. Okay. But do you see how that works? So basically, this is how many seconds it's been, and then we're setting its rotation around Z to be just the number of seconds it's been since, since the creation of the object. And we're rotating the static mesh component, which is uh, this. Okay. So if we wanted to run faster, well, we just multiply this number, right? By something. So why don't we just like multiply it times, I don't know, 10 or something? 20. And now it'll rotate twice, uh, 20 times as fast. So there we go. So we got. It's pretty good, I think. Looks pretty good. It's pretty good speed. But we we want it to move left and right. You know what I'm saying? So, hmm. so what we're gonna do is do a sine wave, I guess. Let's see how I do this. Uh, Do a sine degrees or radians? We can do radians. So the number of seconds is going to fed into sine, and so basically every six seconds it's going to go one full cycle left and right. So in six seconds, it's six point two seconds. It's going to go to the right and it's going to go to the left. And how much it goes to the left, how much it goes to the right depends on some numbers we we change here. So I'm going to start off by pulling out the starting rotation here. And I'm going to split it, and I'm going to get its starting z, its z rotation, whichever way it's looking. I'm going to add the. Um, I'm going to let's see here. Yeah. So I'm going to take this and like multiply it by. So the the results of a sign is going to be from one to negative one. And so if I wanted to rotate, how many how many degrees should it rotate? Do you think ninety degrees? It's maybe too much. Like how how far do you think it should rotate left and rotate right? Like, what do you think? Like, 90 is probably a little too much? Like, 20, 40? Like, what do you think? What's a good, what's a good amount for the, uh, for the center gun to move left and right? Place your votes now. Okay. So it looks... Seventy seven. Right. And then we're just going to add that to our starting rotation. So, so basically, uh, the sign is going to produce a number from zero to one based on the time every six seconds. And we can multiply this to make it go faster. But every six seconds, it's going to go from zero to one, to zero to negative one to zero again. Every six seconds, it's going to repeat that. And the result from this is negative one to positive one. And so we're going to multiply that by 77, 
So that'll have it rotate negative 77 degrees left, and positive 77 degrees right, and off the starting yaw. And then we just feed that in there, and we're good to go. So that's why we wrote down our starting yaw. That's the direction we're rotated in. And we're going to add and subtract off of it. Um, so you can see the is it doesn't just stop and then move in the other direction. It actually kind of smooths. It kind of smoothly smoothly comes to a stop, right? Kind of cool looking, right? So it swings left 77 degrees, swings right 77 degrees, and you can see it has almost like a pendulum-like motion to it. Like if you have something swinging on a pendulum, it'll kind of behave this way. So they sort of follow a sine wave pattern. I'm going to tighten this up a little bit. Uh, I'm actually going to make it a much more gentle motion here. Bruh. So this is like a much narrower swing back and forth here. It's not bad. It's not bad. We can probably play play around with it a little more, but um, yeah. So let me just explain what's going on here. So again, every tick we get how long it's been since uh, it started. It'll start at zero, then one second, then two seconds, three seconds, and four seconds, and it's going to feed that into a sign that's taking a radiance. So that means uh, every six point two seconds, it's back to the beginning again. Uh, I could increase the speed of that by like multiplying this here, um, like by multiplied it by. I don't know, like 10 or something like that, we would go through the whole cycle 10 times faster. And then uh, the result of that sine wave is from negative 1 to positive 1, so we're multiplying it by 30, so we get 30 degrees to the left, 30 degrees to the right, and we're adding that to our starting rotation and then setting our rotation to that. So it goes 10 times faster now, <laughs> which looks a little bit jerky and, uh, and unnatural. Like a toddler throwing a tantrum. <laughs> He's fighting. Uh, maybe twice as fast. A lot of game development is just kind of like looking at things and just like seeing if they make sense, you know? I don't know. What do you think? You like it? Some of the time it can see me, some of the time it can't see me, right? And he killed me. Okay. All right. So I think that's pretty good for today. Um, we we kind of went over like three really important concepts. Um, being able to figure out the direction of the player. This is a displacement vector here. The displacement vector gives you two things. It gives you how far away somebody is, and it gives you the direction of them. Okay. So this displacement vector comes up all the time in video games. Okay. Target location minus your location is the displacement vector. The displacement vector gives you two things, how far away they are and the direction to them. If you care about the direction to them, reroute this node here. Uh, if you care about the direction, then you can use the direction you're looking and see if you're if the direction they are is in the direction you're looking. That's dot product. Dot product returns uh, a number close to one when uh, they're pretty much in front of you, and then you can just compare that against some threshold. And so basically, this is going to tell us are they within range. This is going to tell us are they within our field of view. This is going to tell us, are they visible? And if it passes all three of those checks, we damage them. And then we can have the sentry gun uh, kind of swing back and forth a little bit using uh, game time um, fed into a sine wave, multiplied by some things, added to the starting rotation, that kind of stuff, to give it a nice little swing back and forth. So you can't just like sneak up on it that easily. Like You have to kind of be a little bit further out of the way. 
Okay. You guys, you guys feel that? Um, that's pretty good, I think, place to stop for now. Uh, the next thing to do would be to add enemies that can um, walk around, right? And are, oh, shoot. Uh, oh, wow. When I zoomed out. Oh, that's interesting. Look at that. Actually changes the mouse. Um, and I, I don't think our, our center gun should be moving, you know, like uh, sliding around. You know what I mean? I think I kind of like them just being uh, stationary. So our next enemies are going to be able to actually move around in the walls. We'll, we'll do that on we'll do that on uh, Thursday. Okay. They can shoot back at us. We can shoot at them. So we've actually got a working game here, right? Like, if I if I wanted to, I could take these sentry guns and like position them like at key spots around the map, you know, and uh, you know, have one there and uh, one over here. You know what I mean? And uh, And like in order to break into the, the corporate headquarters, you know, I got all these sentry guns now, right? I like pop them off. You can see the reflection. Uh, we also need to do a, like a health bar for us because right now we don't know what our life is like. You know what I mean? Like it's shooting us. And we're taking damage, but uh, I eliminated the text that printed out our health. So um, we need to do a heads-up display that will show your health bar. That's something Brand. that maybe we can get to on Thursday. But like, Brand. also having a good particle system so that rather than just using the draw debug lines, you actually draw like laser beams and things like that coming out. That would be kind of cool. Let's come over here and pick that up. Keep going. <laughs> Using our little cheap, <laughs> cheap doorway there. Do you understand? But like what we have here is actually pretty good as far as like a stationary enemy that just works as like a sentry gun, right? It, it, it's actually behaving, you know, by the game rules. You know, it won't shoot you through a wall. It won't shoot you if you're too far away. Um, you know what I mean? Like it's, this is, I think, pretty, pretty good for like a sentry gun. And then on uh, on Thursday we can start talking about enemies that walk around the map and try to find you and stealth gameplay and um, maybe we still need to do destructible meshes. But. Okay, I think I think that's pretty good for today. Let me uh, put some screenshots up for you uh, so that you can copy them. And I, I don't want you just like straight up like copying these things. Like it's kind of boring and not very creative if you're just like. You know, just copy and pasting everything I do. Uh, you know, make it for your own your own game. Like maybe you have an idea for a game that you want to make, and uh, you know, don't you know, find some art assets for like I don't know whatever whatever game idea you have and adapt it to it. Like I'm just kind of giving you the tools, right? And that's that's why I'm saying like I can't believe that like some game programs like don't teach dot product. Like how do you you make a game without dot product, you know? Like, it's so useful. Um, well, students can't do linear algebra. It's too advanced mathematics for them. Like, really? Is it? Let me, let me show you the math for dot product, because this looks pretty intense, right? This looks pretty intense. There's actually two different definitions of dot product. One of them is the cosine of theta. So if you take an algebra uh, trig, it's just the cosine of the angle. That's it. So when they're at 90 degrees to each other, the cosine of 90 degrees is 0. Cosine of 0 degrees is 1. Cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1. That's one way you can define it. It's just cosine. Another way you can do it is uh, as x1, x2. Um, what is it? Is it plus, plus y1, y2. So, um, yeah, so it requires two multiplies and one add. So if you had this, this guy here, he's pointed at one zero, and 
the second guy is pointed at zero one. It's going to be one times zero is zero plus zero times one is zero is equal to zero. Remember, dot product is zero when you're at ninety degrees, right? That's it. Like, I'm pretty sure you guys can do two two multiplies and an add. All of you. So I'm in a division in here, you know. So. Super Smash Bros. as a shooter would be pretty cool. Uh, like a first-person shooter, a third-person shooter, something like that. That would be awesome. Okay. And, uh, yeah, at some point in the semester, you're going to pitch your game idea to me. I will uh, thumbs up it or thumbs down it. Usually, if I thumbs down it, it's because students are too ambitious. They try to do something that is too big. I want to make seven different weapons. and I'm like, no, I just do, like, two, you know? If you do two, you can do seven, but seven's going to kill you. So just do two to demonstrate, you know, that it works. So, and then some students like go the other way and there's always like the one guy that's like, I'm going to make a house. Oh yeah. What does that do? It's not, it's just a house. You mean your homework assignment from week one? Yeah. That's my final project. Don't be that guy. <laughs> so, but we'll, we'll talk more about the, the projects and all that coming. So for now, just for Thursday, uh, just make it so that the player can die, have a damage system on the player, and have a sentry gun that will shoot at you if you if it can see you and you're within range and all that stuff. Basically what we did today. But adapt the theming for your game. Right. So that is it for today, everyone. Thanks for coming out. And uh, sorry about the power outage. And I will see you on Thursday. Peace out.